Moving on to the rise of sexualized selfies. This is the pandemic of photography, in my opinion. The pandemic. Why? Because the selfie removed the photographer. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Rat Torado, and welcome back for another episode. Today, I'd like to dive into a topic that's been on my mind for a while because I often get this question if I still shoot photography, if I'm still doing photography. And the short answer is yes. However, I did pull back a lot. And over the past, I would say, four or five years, uh, I haven't created as much work as I used to, you know, back in 2016, 17, 18, when I was heavily into it. I mean, you couldn't even pull me away from photography. I lived, breathed, talked about it, dreamt about it, you know, what was going to be my next creative image that I wanted to create. And it was awesome. I mean, I, I dove into photography after I retired so hard that I even pulled away from myself being physically fit, you know, going to the gym. I've, I've, I was so consumed with trying to be the next guy to create something dope to the point where I lost myself. And that was hard. So I wrote down, I would say over the past few months, I've been writing down notes and and just basically my thoughts. And I'd like to share those reasons with you today. It won't be a long video because I'm not going to go into all the reasons why and the political reasons why I got out of photography or the religious reasons why, but I will keep it short and I'll try to keep the meat and potatoes in here. Maybe, maybe it'll resonate with those of you that are out there still shooting and trying to create content in this saturated world of photography. So I wrote down that uh, why I fell out of love with photography. And I say that photography honestly has been a significant part of my life. But over time, certain aspects of the industry and the culture has made me step back a bit. And I think when we look at how the culture has significantly changed from the beginning of Instagram to current day, it's night and day. When we look at fashion, it's night and day. Uh, when we look at the level of models, uh, aspiring models, it's night and day. Uh, and I'll get into that in a bit. Unfortunately, the direction in which the fashion world is heading makes it difficult for me to participate in it because of my religious beliefs and, you know, how I want to raise my children. And, you know, I'm not going to create content and then at the same breath say that you can't do it yourself, right? I have three girls now and I wouldn't want to be that guy to say, well, you can't do this if you ever wanted to step into the modeling industry or the commercial modeling industry. And then they look back at my work and they're saying, well, dad, you used to shoot it. Why was it okay for them? And it's not okay for me. And so that was a major reason as to why I was like, you know what? I got to pull back here. This just doesn't work for me. I'm not going to create content, sexually explicit content, whether I deemed it to be artistic in value. I mean, that's subjective, but I'm not going to sit here and create that kind of content and then have to be faced with the question, dad, this is what I want to do. Can I do it? So one of the main reasons why I pulled back heavily here, you know, the, the second one was the rise of affordable technology, right? So iPhones and cameras have obviously become incredibly advanced and accessible, which is great for the average person. But honestly, it's led to an overly saturation of self-proclaimed professional photographers, 
Let's call it what it is. Anybody with a dope iPhone now today, you're a photographer. Anybody with a, a cam, you know, a, a DSLR, you're a photographer. But yet you don't know anything about it. You don't even know, you, you don't even understand what light really means and how to use it correctly. It's different for every subject matter, right? Especially when you're dealing with people. You're not going to light the same person over and over and over again with the same light. It just doesn't work. It, it, it doesn't paint the story for that individual the way that individual sees themselves. I don't know if, if that makes any sense to you, but coming from you know, the, 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 the portrait aspect of photography, I always tried my best to bring out the, the emotion in the image, the attitude, maybe the fierceness, the whatever, whatever it was, whatever message I wanted to convey in that image, whether you were holding a Gucci bag or whether it was a beauty image, I just, I still wanted to see the emotion in that individual's face. And how to create that emotion was also utilizing light, whether it be soft light, hard light, uh, it didn't matter, right? So yeah, Any, anybody today with a cell phone that's able to correct the exposure for you, you know, or utilize the high dynamic range feature on it, to bring out, you know, the, the shadows in the distance or whatever, you're a professional photographer. I don't want to say, I, I don't want to put anybody down and take away from their creative ability. I don't, I don't want to do that. That's not, that's not what I'm trying to do today. I'm just trying to say that there are amateur photographers and then there's professional photographers. An amateur, in, in my opinion, an amateur photographer um, is going to struggle during a session whether it be with light or whether it be with just trying to find the, uh, the correct angle. Whereas a professional is going to look at you and understand who you are after maybe five or 10 minutes of converse, uh, you know, conversing with you, they're going to understand what they need to do for you to get that right image. They, they got it. They're going to know, oh, you know what? This hard light or this dramatic light right here doesn't work for you. It's not your personality. Uh, so let's, just, let's use something different. And in my opinion, I think that's what separates the professional to the amateur. These days, anyone with a decent camera can call themselves a pro, honestly, Dimin diminishing really the value of real expertise and experience. It's frustrating to see years of skill and learning being overshadowed by anyone who can snap a few photos on their phone. And that's what I wrote. That's what I wrote down, you know. Um, the next one is the loss of authenticity with Photoshop, right? So I wrote down that another thing that bothers me is the over-reliance on Photoshop and other editing softwares. So don't get me wrong. Editing has its place, but when it becomes a primary tool for creating the perfect image, we lose the raw authenticity that makes a portrait truly special. And this is what I was just talking about before, like, you know, utilizing light to create something special in that, in that client. And when you utilize or you have to rely on Photoshop to make a portrait, uh, you take so much away whether it be facial features, whether it be the micro lines that are in someone's face, that is who that person is. That's who we fall in love with. When we first see our client and we're looking at them, we're not analyzing their beauty, how big their lips are, how, you know, how light their eyes may be or the color of their eyes. We're looking at it from a deeper perspective. You know, when they smile or they smile a bit, maybe it's the dimple Maybe it's those frown lines above the eyebrows. You know, may, maybe, maybe it's the little wrinkles on the eyes here that makes them adorable. And that's what we want to capture. But today, it is so difficult to have people in their, 
I guess, in their comfort zone because they're so busy relying on what other people may think of them. And that just takes everything away from the session. It takes everything away from the experience. So what did I write? I think photography should capture reality, not create an illusion. But it seems like the latter has become the norm. This trend has taken away from the art of capturing true beauty as it is. So I understand that, you know, if you're going to do it for beauty, a product, some soap, maybe some lotion, I get it. But even then, why make it look so AI-ish, right? Why not leave some of the main features of an individual, especially if somebody has a scar, you know? Like, if someone has naturally dark circles underneath their eyes and you attempt to remove those circles, that's not them. And every time I had a client that may have had that issue, they've always said, oh, what am I going to do about these dark circles underneath my eyes? You know, my answer to them would be uh, get a really good makeup artist. Because I'm not going to go in and I'm not going to clean these up for you because it just doesn't make sense. I'm not doing it, even though I can. And I used to do it. I'm not doing that anymore. And therefore, I started to pull back some and not be bothered with the nonsense because it's just nonsense. Low pay, high demands. That's where this comes from. So I, I wrote, let's not forget about the economics of the industry. The pay has become increasingly low, yet the expectations for high-quality work are higher than ever. Clients want the best, but they're not willing to pay for it. The constant demand to produce exceptional work for minimal compensation is exhausting. And it's one of the main reasons I've started to distance myself from this professional world of photography. I just don't want to deal with having to chase people and hey, listen, if I charge 500 bucks for two hours, that's my rate. You either deal with it, you like it, it doesn't, you don't, whatever, but that's the rate. Don't try to haggle me. We are not in a flea market. You wouldn't do it to someone like a tattoo artist. You got to respect the craft. And I feel like maybe... Photography and tattoo artists are very similar. We capture the moment. We make it still forever. They put ink on your skin and they make that forever. It's the same thing. The difference is one is on you and the other is on your phone or maybe in some sort of storage device. So you kind of have this, you know, maybe this, uh, this feeling as if it's not worth it, but it is. Try losing all your images like I did. Try losing everything because of a faulty hard drive. I'm talking about babies born, first birthdays, all the way up to 19th birthdays. Like, try losing that and having all of your memories, your videos and everything just completely wiped out. And then talk to me. Tell me how valuable those images were. Moving on to the rise of sexualized selfies. This is the pandemic of photography, in my opinion. The pandemic. Why? Because the selfie removed the photographer. In my opinion, once the aspiring model or the influencer realized that they were receiving garnering more attention through comments and likes via their own selfies, the need for a professional photographer became obsolete. And so I've wrote, we've all seen the professional portrait being replaced by sexualized selfies. Social media has glamorized the selfie to the point where professional photography often feels unnecessary. This trend has shifted the focus from creating meaningful artistic portraits to producing quick, attention-grabbing images that lack depth and substance. 
And we see it day in, day out. How many images can we see of the same shit, whether it be ass shots, body shots, uh, tit shots, lips shots? How, How many shots of themselves can we see over and over and over again? I know the reason why. Because they built that fan base based on that type of content. The content that used to be produced by portrait photographers, creative photographers, fashion photographers, no longer exists. Now, we just want to see you for who you are. All the dudes out there that, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Suckers. (laughs) Simps. Simps and suckers, right? That, That are being... I would say thirst trapped into either paying for it, commenting on it, liking it. It's taken the selfie game to another level, to another stratosphere. And that's what we have today all over all walks of social media. This is how women are making their money. Hence the rise of OnlyFans. OnlyFans is the same thing. Why post a nude shot on Instagram when I can post it and get paid for it on OnlyFans, right? That's the that's where it's gone to. And shout out to the dude who invented OnlyFans. I think it's some Jewish dude or something like that. He he capitalized off of them sexualizing themselves for free. Why sexualize yourself for free when you can get paid doing it? I'm not hating. God bless him. The other thing was the culture of copying. And I hated this as well, man. I wrote down that there was there's this issue of originality or the lack thereof. It seems like everyone is copying everyone. Social media has created a culture where trends are constantly recycled. We know that. I mean, everyone's back to wearing baggy pants and baggy shirts again, right? Meanwhile, I was wearing that shit back in the 80s. It was a thing. Nothing original, all right? Because no one is original right now. The generation today can't create anything original, okay? So let's continue. Social media has created a culture where trends are constantly recycled and innovation is stifled. This copycat mentality drains the creative spirit, making it hard to stay inspired and passionate about the craft. It is that plain and simple. It's hard. And when you're out there trying your best to be as creative as possible, you attempt to post the image out there for the world to see. And guess what? About a thousand other photographers had did something extremely similar to you. And so it takes it away. And that's why you'll see many photographers out there, including myself, with very, very few followers or very few attention, whether it be comments or likes. And it's because the work has been seen already. The internet is partly responsible for that, for making it overly saturated because it's taking every image in the world that people are posting, everyone's ideas, everyone's creativeness, and it's like sandblasted all in one minute. So once you've seen it all, then what is there else to see, right? What, what, what else is there to see? You can't surprise me with anything else. I think I've seen every freaking beauty image there is known to man. So when I see one today, I'm just like, I'll scroll up next, next, next. And that's what, that it's, that's what it's become. It's a keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. I'm not even giving an image a second. As it's scrolling up, I'm looking at it, and in my head, I'm saying, yeah, I've seen this before thousands of times. This is nothing. And that's where it's become. So moving on to false perceptions of beauty. That's another pandemic. False perceptions of beauty. I wrote down that social media has also warped the perception of beauty. Many clients come to photographers with unrealistic expectations because of their self-esteem is tied to the number of likes and comments they get online. 
Yes. This is why if you ask anyone or if you just pay attention to social media in general, in their bio, everyone's a model. You, you, you go on, I'm, I'm, I'm heavy into YouTube at this point right now, right? This is all I watch. I don't even watch daytime television. Don't watch the news. I get all my info from YouTube, from real people, right? And on these platforms, these dating platforms and shows that are on social media, everyone is a model. Like, I don't understand... It's taken away from the professional model. So now when we look at what a real model is supposed to look like, we're bashing that individual because that, that individual is 5'11", 120 pounds, and right away we want to call these people sick. No, that's not a model. 5'11", you should be over 200 pounds if you're a female. That's where we're at. So if they're 5'11", 120 pounds, she has an eating disorder. It's terrible. What are you going to do, guys? The last thing is, I think it's become increasingly difficult for clients who are authentic and content with who they are. There's so many... You know, there's there's so many there's so much fakeness out there. I mean, that's the only word I can I can use. Uh, it seems like many people today are just chasing after an idealized version of themselves. You know, it's kind of like an AI version of of themselves, and it's it's obviously influenced by social media rather than embracing their true beauty. And as a photographer, it's disheartening to work with clients who are never truly satisfied with their images because they're comparing themselves to unrealistic standards. That's the problem today. You know, you try your best to like this individual in such a way where it's just flawless, it's beautiful, you're hiding imperfections with the amount of light that you're using and it's creating dynamic portraits and they're looking at it saying, well... You can see this little line above my eyebrow or I don't really like this because you can see my smile line over here. It's wild, man. So there you have it. All right. Those are my reasons why I kind of pull back from the world of photography. Listen, it wasn't an easy decision, but uh, it's one that I've definitely come with peace with. Uh, I think photography is always going to have a special place in my heart. Um, but I'm choosing to step back and step away from, you know, this world of photography. Uh, I think if you're feeling the same way, uh, just know that you're not alone. You know, you're not alone. Uh, and it's okay to walk away from it, especially if it doesn't bring you joy. And ultimately, if it doesn't pay the bills, right? With that being said, guys, I appreciate you listening. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.